Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you today? Yes. Are you feeling good? Yes. It's a Saturday. Yes. It's another money-making opportunity day for all of us here. Yes. yes. Today is very important because you're going to learn how to put everything together in your structure of your presentation step by step. We're going to start by a little bit of role playing, a little bit of knowledge about the websites, a little bit of learning how to present certain sizzle opportunities. But first, I'm going to share with you what we're going to be doing today. Okay? So today we're going to be covering the whole structure of your presentation. You're going to be learning how to start and how to finish. And it's very important that you know the start, you know the finish, and you know what to do because you have to close people. A, B, C, always be closing from the beginning. You have to pre-close them, so at the end they're not going to say to you, I want to think about it, need time to talk to my dog. <laughs> okay, or need to see a guru about my philosophies of life before I even join and meditate on it. Okay? So you have to learn how to do this. Now, the structure is a structure, therefore it means you have to stick to the structure. If you deviate from the structure, it will not be as powerful and will not get people involved as much and you're not going to make as much money. So although think you may think your way of doing it may be better, it's not. This is the structure you have to stick by. And the structure is a series of steps that you have to complete. And in your own mind, in your own manual, you will learn how to do that. The first thing that we do in our business is we suspect. Because everyone's a suspect until they're a prospect. <laughs> Nothing to do with suspiciously. Basically, it means in the context of they are a suspect for the business, but not yet a prospect. Right? Now, a, a suspect, you have to qualify. Agree or not agree? Yes. So, basically, a suspect, you have to qualify, and you do the qualification process by... Finding out, finding out through several different channels if they are interested in the business. For example, have you ever met anyone who can supply a $2,000 holiday for $25 and increase the sales of your company by at least 20% guaranteed? Right? You find out by qualifying through certain things you do like that, and then you find out if they're a prospect or not. So once you've qualified, then you have a prospect. So a prospect is basically an opportunity. And a prospect is somebody that can buy or join your business and is qualified. Is qualified. Okay? So once you've qualified, once you've got a prospect, the next thing you have to do is what? Can anyone tell me? Build rapport. Before you do that. I know. find it. You have to campaign for appointment. Now a lot of people think that this part of what you do is easy, but it's not. It's easy when you know how when you've been doing it so many times, but you've got to be very disciplined in making appointments. Now I can share this with you because I've done this so, for so many years and I can share with you the best way of doing it. Would you like to know the best way of doing it? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Right. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to plan your day to have appointments, right, every 45 minutes. You have your appointment set every 45 minutes. You always book two in at the same time. You always book two appointments for the same time. Because 50% of your appointments will not show. 
Would, have you had an experience with this, Martin? You were preaching to the first Yes, good. 50% of your appointments will never show even if they, you've known them for years. Car broke down, traffic jam, uh, <laughs> fell sick, my leg fell off, <laughs> something like that. Yes? Does that mean you bring them together to a set strike location, is it? No, what I'm saying, Mr. Iqbal, is one of those people will not show. No, what I mean is, you make an appointment, you bring them to a certain place, right? No, you bring them to any place that you want. Because you've got to be working from a certain place, or you've got to go and visit them. But what you want to do is get them to this office as much as you can, or the Singapore office as much as you can. Because that gives you credibility. Right? Now, sometimes that's not possible. For example, Tunku Fauzi with the red polo shirt with the number two on the back, with the big yellow horse on the front. <laughs> right? He's been working till three o'clock in the morning, visiting different areas in KL on his motorbike, presenting to people. Because he's very motivated, and you know what? He needs the money desperately. Right? So that's what he's prepared to do to take action. Right, my friend? Right. Yes. Did it work for you? Yes. How many people did you sign up the night before last? Five. 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 Okay, so that's dedication, it's motivation, it's hunger because you really want to do it. And that's the secret of success. You have to put away doubt. You have to put away thinking about doing something. You have to do it and take massive action to do it now. Otherwise, it won't happen for you. You know, this is why people are successful, people are average. This is why there are super successful people at the top, always stay at the top. And there are people that wonder why the hell they got there. You know, there's three types of people in the world. There are people who make things happen. There are people who watch things happen. And there are people who wonder what the hell happened. <laughs> Most people are in category number three. Yeah. Right? So you've got to have... And the reason, uh, you know, the people are successful in category one is because they have a plan. Right? They've decoded the rules of success and they know the territory and they have the correct map to fit the territory. Do you understand what I'm saying, everyone? Yes. So... You've got to find a venue, which is this office. If they can't make this office, then you have to, you know, visit them. Because you have to set yourself a certain number of appointments a day and a week. And you can only do that if you have a goal of how much money you need to make. Without that goal, you'll not make appointments. <coughs> you'll go home and watch a movie instead. So really, it doesn't depend on Max Generation, it doesn't depend on me. It depends on how much money you want to make. Because the people who are really desperate to make the money will go out to 5 o'clock in the morning on the motorbike and see lots of people and sign lots of people up. And when you come back in the morning at you know, 9, 5 o'clock and you go to bed and get up at 9 o'clock, you feel fantastic because you signed five people up the night before. Or would you rather stay up all night worrying about, oh, I don't know if I can do this or not. <laughs> That's the difference between success and failure, isn't it? Yes. Okay, so, you know, I can't force you to do that. I can't um, make you do it, only you can do it, because it's what you want out of the business. So qualification, prospect, campaign for an appointment, you've got to have a venue, you've got to have all your materials, your business kit, your do list, internet connection, all that kind of stuff, right? Yes. You make your appointments always on a Thursday and Friday. Thursday and Friday. You you campaign for your appointments on a Thursday and a Friday. So you can set your appointments from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now why do I do that? Because on Monday, people are too busy thinking about work. They haven't got time to talk to you. They're worried because they feel guilty of having fun over the weekend. <coughs> They've got reports to do for their boss. They've got people to see themselves. They're not, they're not going to focus. Thursday and Friday are the best days because people are more relaxed because it's going towards the weekend. But they're not in a weekend mood yet because they're still at the office. That means they've got a little bit of focus there. They're not, you know, influenced by football, alcohol or women. <laughs> or men, as the case may be. Because it works both ways. So that's the best time psychologically, psychologically to make an appointment with somebody. So make an appointment Thursday and Friday for the following Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Right? Now, when I had this structure in place 10 years ago, when I, when I joined an MLM business, not my own business, by the way, because part of my research was to join an MLM business and find out how they did it. 
When I put this structure in place, I rose to the top of the business, made all the money, but it didn't fulfill me because it wasn't mine. Right? But I did manage to see 15 people a week, minimum. That means in front of me were 15 people a week, minimum. And the, I'll tell you now, the top MLM people are seeing 10 people a day. Right? If you want to do this business full time, that's the commitment you have to make. Now, if you see 10 people a day for two years, I guarantee you, you won't need my training anymore. <laughs> guarantee, because you'd be rich. That's the formula. Whether you're prepared to do that or not is really up to you. But I was seeing 15 qualified people a week and I was signing up 90% of those people because they were qualified prospects, they were turning up, they wanted to change. Everyone's gone quiet all of a sudden. <laughs> Amaze. Amaze we just tried. Oh, I thought everyone's thinking of setting up next generation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do? Great thing about this business is I share the profits with you. Right, MLM, it takes you a, a few years to get the same level because it's about a thousand people before you start making any money. You have to recruit a thousand people that recruit a thousand people before you start making any money. I know I've done it myself, all right? So, this is the number of people that you need to see. Now, is anybody here willing or got the time to do that? Yes. Because it means you're going to have to sacrifice things. It means you're gonna, if you're working, you can't do it. Or you have to do it at five till five o'clock in the morning. Now, you know, I've had people work with me that had no time, but they got up at four o'clock and they, they made their appointments, all of them, before nine and went to the office. Now, that is commitment, agree or not agree? Yes. yes. And it felt great when they were in the office because they'd signed a few people up already. Fantastic. Because always feel, you always feel best when you've achieved something that you've aimed for and you've done it all yourself. That's when you have the best moment in your life, the best moments. That's what you have to earn, guys, because those moments don't come without you putting effort into it. It doesn't come on a plate. So you have to campaign for your appointment by using telemarketing, SMS, voicemail, and networking. And if you look on your phone, you're probably going to have at least, at least, if you are human, 100 people. If you're not human, you'll have less than that. If you are a networker, you'll have thousands of names in your phone. So that, that's the first place you have, to, you have to really share the business to people. Everybody with me so far? Yes. Now, let's be honest with each other. Has anybody been doing that before now? You have. Ten appointments a day? Ten appointments a day? Uh, not no, five. five. Right. So, those five appointments a day, have you been closing them every time? No, you haven't. So, therefore, you have to change your approach. Yeah. Because if it's not working, you have to change your approach. This week is the structure that is effective, works all of the time, will close. Well, you know, when I present to people, I close. My minimum closing percentage is 60%. Minimum. Right? So if I can do that, it's just a pitch. Life is not a script, it's a pitch. It's a pitch. Because you have to persuade people every single day of your life. And when you start getting uh, used to doing it, you start to become very confident in what you're doing. And people respect that, they look up to you and you see, they see you as a successful person. And people want to hang around with successful people. They're attracted to that success. They're attracted to that kind of belief level and conviction that you have. People are not attracted to worriers or, you know, negative people. So if you start worrying, you've got to start taking action because that will overcome your worries. Right or not? Yep. So you've got to campaign for your appointment. And then you have to meet and greet. You have to meet and greet. Sounds a simple thing, right? Yes. So how do you meet people normally? Mm. 
You meet people by SMS. <laughs> I'm talking about, let's talk about offline for a moment, right? How do you physically meet people? What are the things that you do when you meet somebody physically? How do you do that? Okay, so come on. Come up. Come up. Stand up! <laughs> Go over there. Go over there. Right, now you're going to meet me for the first time. So meet and greet me. Hi, hello. Hello! Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Let's have a talk. <laughs> Let's have a talk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Can you let go of my hand, please? Right. <laughs> that was actually not bad. Give me a round of applause for that. It's very good. <clears throat> a meet and greet starts with everything. Positive, focused, eye contact, looking clean, looking smelling clean, looking successful. An aura of success. Okay? That's what you have to portray in the meet and greet. Firm handshake, not a fish handshake. Fish handshakes are vomiting things. When someone does that, oh, <laughs> not nice. <laughs> Has anyone ever felt a handshake of that nature? Yes. It's called a fish head handshake. It's not nice. Yeah. Right? So you've got a firm handshake. Make sure your hands are not sweaty before you shake the person's hand. I know people that are really confident, but before they meet someone, they get really nervous and they go, <laughs> and they shake their hands like that and go, <laughs> And you completely destroy any chance you had of making money. I met this person yesterday, he watched Matchmaker, he's got really sweaty hands. I wonder if they've all got sweaty hands like that. Mm. So, you know, all these things. But the most important thing before you meet and greet is get yourself in the right state. So everyone stand up, put your notes down. Are you prepared to do something where you give a 110% commission, uh, commitment <laughs> and commission Where you don't hold back. You don't hold back. So when I say to you, make your move, I'm going to say, for example, you're going to jump up and down like this. You've got to put your hands in the air like that for about 10, 20 seconds, and you go like this. Bring it on. So that's my move. Now I'm ready to present. Are you ready to do that, Mr. Constant? Now, your move does not have to be the same as mine. It can be something different. It can be like... <laughs> like that. I don't know. <laughs> or it can be something like a karate. <laughs> <laughs> Even in corporate appointments, it works. If you're about to meet a CEO, and you've read all about them, and they're really powerful and really successful, they've got no time for anybody, they're really arrogant, you need to be in the right state, yes or no? Yes. yes. Because when you meet that CEO, you want to go in the office and sit in his chair. Yes. 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 Would anyone like to try that? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, the CEO of that company is not an expert on incentives. You are. Yes. So you have to sit in his chair to empower yourself as the expert. And if he doesn't like it, so what? Because if you sit in another chair, he's going to walk all over you. And you're not going to get a deal anyway, so you've got nothing to lose. <laughs> now, I've done this. I do this all the time, guys. It works because it puts them, it kind of breaks their pattern. Oh, my God, he's sitting in my chair. <laughs> Cheeky bugger. <laughs> but then when you become an expert, they start to respect you, and therefore you start to get deals, guys. It's quite amazing how it works. And then once you've sat in the chair, you learn how to mirror and match body language. We're going to do that this afternoon. And this is something that you have to discipline yourself on because most people think that intangible is not critical in, in deal making. I can tell you right now, it is everything about deal making. You know, I've closed a $3 million deal quite regularly by sitting in a certain way to match the person in front of me. And when I shifted my language, they sign the paperwork. So are you prepared 
to change your physiology approach to people when you are deal making, yes or no? Yes. And this happens with everybody that you meet, because if you meet and greet somebody like this, Tanis, come on the stage a minute. Up, step up, right. If you're meeting and greeting like this, hi, how are you, I'm Marco. <laughs> Right, what you're doing is you're invading their space. Yeah. So you've got to learn the first discipline of body language, which is proximity. Right, now a lot of people in here that I know are not doing this. And actually, secretly, you can stay there, I've not finished yet. <laughs> secretly, you are offending people. It, although you don't know it consciously. Does this interest anybody here? Yes. yes. And most of you are guilty of doing this. The most successful people in this room are guilty of doing this, of invading people's private space, because proximity is determined by many variables, including how well you know the person, which direction you're standing, gender. the gender, yeah. the culture, yes. the, 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 the what you're wearing, the smile, a lot of variables. Now, if I stand there, you can see that Tanis is a little bit She's pulling back a little bit, right? Yes. <laughs> see, I moved! What did she do then? She moved. She moved. Is she, can you see the proximity? Yeah. Yes. As soon as I moved, although I said something, now she's completely transformed. Do you want someone like that to deal with or someone like this? <laughs> okay, this is the power of body language that we're going to empower today. But the first thing we have to do is get in the right state. Thank you, Tanis. Give a round of applause for that. Now, to get into the right mental and physical state, you have to think of something by visualizing. And that means you have to close your eyes before you get into the right state and visualize an exact goal that you really desire the most, the most compelling thing in your life that you must, must, must have. And you have to visualize yourself living that goal. Now, to do that, it's a technical thing and it's called NLP. And you can do that by bringing in your mind a picture together of a vision that you want to live. Because vision is everything that moves you to a different place towards your goals. If you have no vision, you move away from your goals. Vision creates action. Vision creates action. And vision without action is a daydream, by the way. But action without vision is a nightmare. <laughs> right? It's a nightmare because you don't know where you're going. So before you get into this state, you have to really think about what you really want and focus on your, 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 most, your most relevant goal to you. And you have to bring it in your mind. And once you've got that picture in your mind, you go, <laughs> Yes! And then you go into the meeting. <coughs> okay, everybody with me so far? Yes! yes. So what I want you to do, without music, I'm very sorry, we make our own music. We harmonize together. Is so I want you to close your eyes. And think about the best moment you've ever had in your life. Now, once you've got that moment in your mind, I want you to raise your hand so I can see where everybody is. Keep your hand raised. And the people that have got that moment in their mind, I want you to bring that picture, make it black and white. Raise your left hand if it's black and white. Now that black and white picture, I want you to enlarge it and bring it towards you very slowly. Keep your eyes closed, bring it towards you very slowly and start to colorize the picture. Start to put some red in the picture, start to put some green in the picture, start to put some pink in the picture. And start to make the picture a little bit brighter than what it is. Bring that picture more towards you now. Now in that picture, instead of making it a picture, I want you to turn it into a video. Nod your head if it's now a video. Nod your head if you can hear people talking in your video. 
Nod your head if you can see yourself in that video. Now put yourself in that picture and start associating with it. Make the picture bigger. Make the picture so big that it's actually coming towards you like a movie screen and you're walking towards it yourself and you're going into the movie. And just think how that feels. What you are seeing, what you are smelling, what you are tasting. Try and experience the senses of where you are and what you're doing. And relive that moment and think how good it felt to live that moment. Think how good it feels to have that moment again. Say yes if you have that moment right now. Yes! How good does it feel? Yes! You put your arms down now, just shake your arms around a little bit. Keep that picture in your mind, keep your eyes closed. Start to move your body around a little bit, you know, start to shake your legs around, walk around a little bit. But keep that in your mind. Keep that picture in your mind, keep that movie moving. Keep focused. Keep focus on it. Keep your eyes closed. Now stand and spread your legs apart and change your posture. And what I mean is, is throw your chest forward and your head back. So imagine someone's pulling a string from your chest and your chest is moving forward. And let's work on the breathing. Now breathing is a very important part of physiology and also a part of mentally strengthening your inner self. And think how a baby breathes. A baby breathes not using their chest but using their stomach. That's what a diaphragm's for. So let's just exhale right now, go and breathe in. Exhale. Now next time when we breathe in, you're going to make your belly expand like a pregnant lady. Not yet, because then you're going to let, let more in to your lungs. Because when you do that, you move your stomach away so your lungs can fill with more air. So let's breathe in together and push your stomach out. And hold. And when you exhale, keep hold breath there. You're going to bring your stomach in and expel the air. So let's expel and exhale. And you're using more oxygen now. And let's breathe in again. Push the stomach out. Hold it. And exhale. And again, breathe in. Push the stomach out. Okay, open your eyes. Look around you. Smile, forget about all your worries, and focus on what you want. Because now we're going to start to have some energy. Would you like to have some energy, Mr. Constant? Yes. yes. And I'm going to ask you to say empowering words while I'm doing this exercise. So I might ask a question where I say to you, say yes! Yes! And when you've got to do this, You've got to use your stomach to really empower that, that word out from the core of who you are. Not from your mouth, from here. Say yes! Yes! Right, that's the difference, guys. Okay, so let's just move around a little bit. Now, if you're not feeling very well or you're not very, you know, you're not very <laughs> athletic, you don't have to jump. You can just move around like this. You can move around like this. <laughs> <laughs> See, and everyone is starting to feel a little bit happier, right? So let's try an exercise. I want you to face the person next to you. Oh yes, I like that, Baraj, I like that. What we're going to do now is we're going to have one person who's A and one person who's B decide which one you are right now. Okay, now listen carefully, listen carefully, listen carefully to the instructions. If you are A, 
you have to do the sexiest disco dance you've ever done in your life. Now you can move the chairs if you wish. <laughs> so sexiest disco dance. Now if you are B, if you are B, you have to copy exactly what A does. <laughs> and if you are A, you're going to do the sexiest, and I mean sexy. I don't mean like this. <laughs> Would you like to see mine first? Yeah. Let's have some volume. Ready? Now, I didn't mean for Dalton to kind of, you know, jump on top of me. <laughs> but that is normally the reaction I get. Uh, right, so, are we ready? Yeah!